I'm Oneida from Wisconsin and also Muskogee Creek belonging to Tlatlaco Tribal Town based out of Wetumpka, Oklahoma. Um, I'd like to acknowledge my mother who's in the room. Cheryl Harris is the second vice chair for the Bernalillo County Party with Anna um, Canales and my husband over here, LT Goodluck, who's um, Navajo from Chinle, Arizona. And um, I'm the daughter of Robert L. Kennard, he's deceased, and, and my mother, Cheryl Harris. I'm the granddaughter of um, Virgil Buck Kennard and Ruth Swamp Kennard. Um, they were lifelong Democrats who moved here to Albuquerque in the late 1940s and were really passionate for um, urban Native American people who did a lot for the <coughs> community in Albuquerque. I still meet people every day who knew my grandparents. and. Um, it's part of that reason why I'm running today. I want to continue their legacy on. I just lost my grandmother Ruth, who was 95, in December. And part of, I feel, a sense of urgency and responsibility to carrying on their legacy and what they've started. Um, I am an urban Native American, and I represent that community very well. Here in um, Albuquerque, I helped start the Native American Community Academy with Kara Barbara and several other people in the community. Um, to create an, a Native American school for our urban youth. And um, I was the Dean of Students for five years. I left this past fall, it was very difficult, but I left to go work with LaDonna Harris and Laura Harris at Americans for Indian Opportunity because I have this commitment to seeing our, um, to advocating for our people, whether it's here in New Mexico or nationwide or in, on a global level and helping our indigenous people. I'm really honored and humbled to really be here speaking um, before you all, first off. I just want to say thank you to Nordhaus Law Firm and everyone for allowing me to speak today and to the other candidates because, as Deborah said, it doesn't matter who wins. All of us in this room need to make that commitment to continue um, working together to remain strong and making sure our voice is heard and our issues are heard and that we're electing Democrats to um, uh, our party that listen to us, that care about us, and that are going to move us forward. With that said, some of my background, I am a lifelong kind of political or organizer. My mom would take me around door knocking when I was a little kid in Utah. Um, I've helped, you know, campaign and get out the native vote. I've canvassed at the Pueblos. I've attended the rallies. I've phone banked. I'm sure all of us have done that. It's our responsibility to do those things, and I will continue doing that. With that said, there's, there's three really important things that I've been thinking about. What can I contribute as a vice chair? I think <coughs> I reflect the diversity of our state. Um, with our recent census data from 2010, um, the data shows that 51, almost 52% of our Native American people are living off reservation now. So we really need to strategize on how we're going to reach our Native vote. That way we need to, of course, continue canvassing our pueblos, uh, reservations, but we also need to come up with a plan. We need to use Vote Builder. We need to look at our census data and develop plans for, our na uh, for getting out the native vote on our off to our off-reservation constituents. And that's something I'm really committed to. Um, I think I'm very connected to the urban community here in Albuquerque. I look around the room, and a lot of you, most of you, know who I am and know what I stand for. Um, the second thing I think we need to do is we need to be actively involved. And I want to work with Alvin on this of having a voice on the redistricting of our congressional districts. Yeah. We're in a time now with our census data where we really need to not lose our voice. Unfortunately, we saw our CD2 candidates, Tahajale and Ozleta, lose a large portion of our voice and won't be heard at our state meeting on the 30th because we didn't get the vote out for the governor election last year. And, I, and that hurts. It hurts that some of our people aren't being heard now. And we need to really be active and re, re, um, working with redistricting. And I, I really am committed to that. Um, and that's the second thing I want to do as your vice chair. The third thing um, is I really feel that we can work with organizations like the Wellstone Organization in Minnesota that helps train political organizers. And I really would be committed to helping fundraise to get a group of Wellstone advocates down to New Mexico to train as many of us as possible um, as political organizers. I think that will make us all more effective um, in our communities and getting out the vote. I have many more ideas. I'm, I'm very humbled to be here today. I ask for your support. I will give you a 100% commitment. I'm attending law school, so I'm excited to talk to Deborah about her experience at UNM in the fall. So I'll be a full-time student and dedicating the rest of my time to the Democratic Party. So thank you and have a good afternoon.